In 1955, film producer Edmund Goldman purchased the rights to Godzilla from Toho, with the agreement that the film would be heavily edited and revised to make it more palatable for mainstream American audiences, who at the time had no interest in watching foreign films. To do this, American editor and director Terry O. Morse was brought in to write and direct the new footage starring actor Raymond Burr, who was hired to portray a new character which would be added and integrated into the original Japanese footage. And so two years after the original debuted in Japan, the American cut, titled Godzilla King of the Monsters, was released in theaters in 1956, becoming a monster hit that would forever leave its mark on the franchise. A prehistoric monster the Japanese call Godzilla has just walked out of Tokyo Bay. He's as tall as a 30-story building. American reporter Steve Martin stops by in Tokyo to visit his old friend Dr. Serizawa, only to discover a nation in chaos as ships are reported to be disappearing without a trace. Drawn to the story, Steve follows along as scientist Dr. Yamane travels to Odo Island to interview one of the survivors, where they discover the source of the destruction, a massive marine dinosaur the natives call Godzilla. Japan attempts to kill the creature, but instead provokes it, drawing it inland to Tokyo, where Steve could only watch in horror as he decimates the city. With little hope left, salvation may just lie in the hands of Dr. Serizawa, who harbors a dark and destructive secret. It could be argued that Godzilla King of the Monsters is as important to the Godzilla franchise as the Japanese original, if only for different reasons. While the original is a somber mood piece meant to appeal to a population very familiar with the horrors it represents, the American version aims for the mainstream, stripping most of the political subtext in favor of a more traditional monster movie. And while one could make a valid case that this corrupts the original's message, in its place is a film more accessible for the audiences of the time, one that popularized Godzilla as an icon of Japan, and contributed to it becoming one of the most successful and longest running franchises of all time. Godzilla King of the Monsters tells the same tale as the original, with the key difference being the presence of Raymond Burr as reporter Steve Martin. The film actually begins with a flash forward to after Godzilla's rampage through Tokyo, which does a decent job hooking the audience with a bit of mystery. From then on we follow Steve as he recalls what led up to that scene of destruction, which means lots and lots of voiceover narration explaining what is happening on screen. And while this narration is quite well written, there is no denying that it is a massive crutch the film relies on to keep things moving. This is tolerable though thanks to a legitimately good performance by Raymond Burr, who, despite only working on the film for one day, doesn't phone it in. He commits and treats the material with proper gravitas, to the point where hearing his lines delivered over the scenes of mass destruction just may give you goosebumps. Godzilla has turned the heart of Tokyo into a sea of fire. Beneath the flames, thousands lie dead or dying. Technically speaking, all the American footage is integrated fairly well with the Japanese footage, though those familiar with the original film will be able to spot the cuts quite easily. Body doubles were used for the few scenes where Steve Martin had to interact with the Japanese characters, with the camera conveniently facing the back of their heads. Dubbing is used for scenes featuring only the Japanese cast, and while it's not particularly great, for the time it gets the job done. The film is also 16 minutes shorter than the Japanese version, thanks to some trims done to tighten the pace, which admittedly does benefit the film in a few scenes here and there. It cannot be overstated how immensely important Godzilla King of the Monsters was to the legacy of the Godzilla franchise. For 50 years, this was the only version available for Western audiences. It established the moniker of King of the Monsters, which would stick with the character going forward, and introduced Godzilla to mainstream audiences outside of Japan. Raymond Burr as Steve Martin would himself go on to become an iconic character, to the point where he would return 30 years later. It does lack the political depth and nuance of the original, which is undeniably superior in almost every way, but as an American revision of a Japanese classic, it holds up remarkably well and works as an enjoyable companion piece to the film that started it all. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.